What's up guys, my name is Nick White, I do tech and coding stuff, I got the computer fingers and I, you know, I'm doing all the typing and stuff like that, and I'm a nerd. So if if you're interested in that kind of stuff, please subscribe, please like the video, it helps me with my channel, promotion, and growth. Today I wanted to talk about, or just address, people that are thinking about, I want to get into coding, or I want to get into programming first thing you might want to know is programming and coding mean the exact same thing. That confused me a little bit when I first started. uh, I was like, what the hell is the difference between these? They mean the same thing. So when I say programming, I mean coding. When I say coding, I mean programming. Usually people call them programmers because like coders just sounds kind of stupid. So you want to start coding. Like why? Why do you want to start coding like this? You want to be a nerd like me? You want to be a nerd like all these people sitting in their bedroom all day typing on a computer? Okay, well, I guess that, I mean, do you? I mean, that's fine. You can do that. I mean, it's not that bad. It's pretty cool, I guess, because you do come off as smart to people who don't code. Even if you know the most basic stuff in programming, you're going to be able to tell your friends like, yeah, dude, Python, for loop, I through O of N time in print uh, I. Yeah, and then they're going to be like, holy crap, this kid is a genius. So if you just want to impress people, you know, this is a good way to impress people because as soon as you start learning even a little bit, you're going to look like a genius to people, even though you're not. You're not a freaking genius. Um, another reason people want to get into this is for the money, right? People want to, oh yeah, to Google, I can make 200K at Google. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to make a million dollars, right? Uh, it's definitely not that easy, but there is some good money. Even if you're pretty crap at programming, you can make some pretty good money compared to other things you have to go to school for a long time for and waste all this money and time and, uh, Coding, you can kind of get there. It's a little shortcut to the money. That doesn't always lead to the best programmers, though, because, uh, you know, I think the best programmers come when, you know, there's people that are younger, and they're just, you know, nerds from birth, and they like math, and they like coding, and they naturally just started coding on their own. Like, nobody was, like, telling them about it or making them do it. They just were, like, browsing the Internet, start coding. That's where the little prodigy people come from. And those people are usually super successful in the industry. So if that's you, then you're probably going to be successful. If you're just getting interested in this for your own, for the sake of just because you think it's cool, I mean, you might be successful, especially if you're a kid because freaking kids that start coding are like, dude, it like shapes your brain or whatever. So, so yeah, those are, you know, just some of the reasons. I'd just recommend asking yourself why and making sure you want to do it before you start. Uh, But once you want to start, I can give you a little bit of guidelines for what you might want to do. So, you know nothing, right? You don't know anything. Maybe you know HTML. Maybe you know CSS. First, I'd say, how smart are you? Like, do you get good grades? Do you think you're a smart person? Can you articulate when you're talking to people? Can you read a book? Like, are you decently capable of, like, learning on your own? If so, you might want to just jump right into Python or Java. Like, just go for it. It's going to be kind of hard to pick up at first, but if you find the right course online, you're going to be able to do these. Pick pick up a language like that or JavaScript or something right out of the gate. Just learn them, and uh, I think you'll be good. If you're not that comfortable and you're not even sure, maybe you're like 50% like, eh, I don't know, maybe I want to Maybe I want to code, maybe I don't. I don't know. It seems kind of cool, but like, I don't know. Uh, If that's you, then I'd recommend checking out HTML and CSS first just because they're so easy compared to, like, actual programming. It's called a markup language, and then CSS. It's basically just making, like, basic websites. It's really easy to learn, and it gets a lot harder from there. So if you're finding that stuff super impossible and difficult, then you might want to reconsider whether or not you want to become a programmer. Now, uh, what kind of computer do you need? What do you need to start, I guess? Uh, you need these, you basically just need a computer. And uh, I, if you have the money, go with Mac. I just think Mac is just a better user interface. You download things so easily. They're super secure. You don't need to install things. and It's just a super easy computer to get started with. 
However, super expensive. I understand it's honestly way too expensive. They're like, the prices are crazy. And you can get a PC for half the price, if not less. And it can be a pretty decent one, actually. So if you can't afford a Mac, go for a PC. It's not gonna kill you. Like, it's not really gonna be that much harder. It's just, I just think Mac is just better in general. But if you have a PC, that's fine. Now, I'm not saying learn this before you start programming language courses or whatever, but something that's really going to be useful is understanding command line tools. On PC, it's going to be called command line, or you can use git bash or something like that. And on Mac, it's going to be called terminal. You can just look it up. It come, they come with your systems. And those are going to be tools to interact with your computers using commands instead of you doing clicks and stuff like that. And it's going to make programming really easy. I think those are good introductions to coding as well. So maybe pick that up even before you start learning a programming language or just while you're learning at the beginning. Because it's going to really kind of click things together for you, I think. So those are good starting points. There's a bunch of courses online, uh, you know, W3 schools, there's Code Academy. Code Academy is where I started personally. And then you got, you know, Udemy and stuff. Udemy actually has some really good courses and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of YouTubers that make good courses. Uh, like the new Boston is one of the main people that you can learn a programming language from pretty simply. What else are you going to need? Once you have your computer, you're going to have all these resources. You're going to be able to find all of the information you need online. But one thing you're going to need to do that is really annoying when you first start, almost more annoying than learning the programming language, is setting up your environment. So you have to set up your computer for different programming languages in different ways. So if you're learning Python, you have to set it up differently than if you're learning Java. And it's really annoying. Every time you want to learn something new, you have to set up a new environment, and it kind of sucks. But first thing you're going to need is a text editor. The main ones are Atom and Visual Studio Code. So you can grab one of those, you just download them from the websites. Also, the programming language you're gonna be using, you have to download usually. So uh, if you're doing JavaScript and you're doing Node.js, you have to download that on your computer. You can just look that up, like type in download and then the programming language or whatever. Some programming languages are come with your computer. I think Python comes with it and then maybe Java or something like that. I'm not fully sure on that. But you do have to install a lot of stuff that that's more annoying, I think, than even learning is getting everything set up to work perfectly so that you can start coding. And uh, finally, I just want to talk about headspace and uh, like mentality when you're starting is uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be really confusing at first. One thing I would say is don't think it's impossible because there's a lot of really dumb kids, including me, that become super successful programming. You don't have to be a genius to code, you just gotta put the effort in, you gotta be able to learn and feel confident in yourself for, that you're able to learn. And uh, it's not, like, the beginner stuff isn't that bad. So I, when I was, in, like, first learning this, I was like, oh, this is hell, this is hell, like, I don't get it, like, I don't get it. And I would just make it more complicated in my own mind. I would be like, this is, oh my God, what, what are they starting? Everyone complains about their classes early on and stuff, like, or courses, like, they're having me do this, dude. I don't know anything yet. How are they telling me to do this? This course is so stupid. It's like, no, they're probably giving you something simple and you might be over exaggerating it. If you can't figure it out, maybe the best thing is close your laptop, walk away, go get lunch, go get a coffee, come back, open it up, reread the instructions and look at it again. Since I started, I've seen a ton of really good courses come out though, so I'm confident that you're going to be able to understand if you find the right courses to look at. Uh, just learn it from there and it won't be too difficult. Then there's this other mentality when you get about a year in or two years in and you built some basic programs and then you start, th you get your first internship or whatever and you think you're absolutely Jesus. Like, you're like, holy crap, like, I freaking coded, like, a freaking scheduling system, like, I am the smartest person alive, and then you start acting like you know as much as people, listen, dude, it, you, even when you're five years in, you know nothing, you got half of this industry is a bunch of freaking people with, like, 30 years of experience that are, there are literal geniuses that you're going to come across in the industry. Basically, what I'm saying is just don't get big headed. Don't think that you're super smart or a genius after you get a year of experience because you got a long way to go. 
you'll never be as smart as like some of the people out there. Like, not to discourage you or whatever, but like there are freaking geniuses. So from my experience, I see a lot of people when they first start programming, they really need that confidence and they're always getting down on themselves like they suck and they're stupid and they can't get it. And then a little bit in when they start building their programs, they start thinking they're like super geniuses or whatever. So it's kind of like a little reverse mentality. You got to just be aware of all that stuff. Be self-aware. Just be a regular person. Read the instructions. Just be like, okay, this is just like everything else. Learn. I just got to learn. Put practice in. Get good. And then two years in, you just got to be like, okay, I have two years of experience. I'm definitely smarter than I used to be, but I'm not smarter than freaking the CTO of the company. So I'm not going to freaking argue with people and stuff like that. That's So that's pretty much it. The last thing I would say is that I find it a lot easier to learn visually, like, from YouTube videos or courses online. They're just so interactive compared to a book where you have to read it by yourself. And authors, especially in computer science, often write in a way that like make it it's difficult to understand. And that's because people become so smart and so experienced that they find like super complicated and complex things trivial meaning really easy. So like a professor is like, oh, this quantum computing thing's like second nature to me. So they just write it as if it's like second nature, but you're reading it like, what the hell is going, you know what I mean? So uh, I don't honestly recommend that many books. I read some books that I've taken a lot of information from, especially in like uh, discrete mathematics and stuff like that. I've found some books that are cool, but mostly I've learned through YouTube and through watching people code. If you can in some way find someone more experienced than you to actually code with you like in person next to you and teach you things, that's why internships are so awesome I think. That's the fastest way that I learn. Like if I were to teach you one on one, if you were with me like at my house right now and I could just tell you write this command, write this command, this does this, this does this, this does this, this does this. It's just like I'm drilling this into your head and then like eventually you just like get used to it. And it's just so much faster with someone more experienced than, than you in person. You can learn like 10 times the speed of trying to self-learn, I feel like. So if you can find someone that's more experienced and ask them to help you out and get you up and running. There's so many more things uh, to go over, but I'm going to maybe leave that for maybe I could do a part two or I plan on doing a Q&A soon. So ask me any questions in my Discord if you'd like to have further explanation on any of this and I can answer them then. I appreciate you guys for watching. Please remember to like, that really helps the channel and subscribe and all that stuff. Smash the like button. And uh, I'm going to be probably doing Leco next. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Love you. Good night or morning, or afternoon, depending on where you live. Goodbye.